Okay, this is the um, a part in the uh, series that I'm doing on the Balance Scorecard Project. Again, this is uh, part of your grade in the class, and I'm just spending a little bit of time to go over uh, some certain things. And this one covers a student example. Um, there's nothing like looking at what another student has done. Um, and I, before I get started, I just want you to know that this student, which I'm going to refer to as Jane Doe, uh, signed a waiver allowing me to use her project as an example. So I don't, I don't want you to feel like I'm going to use your project as an example of if what you're doing is confidential. And uh, she works, and I hope that you've downloaded the handout that goes with this, which is the, the pieces of the project that I'm going to go over. It's not her full, complete project, but yeah, um, I hope that in, I've given you enough to show how she actually designed her scorecard. So where I started, instead of starting with the history of the company, which is the first part of the project, I got right into the mission and strategy and how she's related that to her balanced scorecard. So the first um, sentence here says, the mission of the East Central Regional Hospital is to provide safe, com com competent, and compassionate services to persons with mental illnesses and or developmental disabilities. So this is kind of a broad mission for the whole hospital. But what uh, Jane Doe actually did was she was responsible, and still is as far as I know, for the training department. Uh, I think they called it the Office of Learning and Organizational Development. And so she's also at the end of this segment has showed the strategic focus of her particular area. It's to develop, to develop and enhance and maintain the workplace environment to attract and support highly motivated, well-trained, individual-focused employees and develop future leaders in the workplace. So that's where she started. She's given me the strategy for her org overall for her organization and then for her particular department because the balanced scorecard is to relate to your particular job. Okay, so she started with learning and growth. Sounds pretty easy because she's already in the uh, responsible for the training department. Okay, so she has down here that for learning and growth uh, is going to be to improve training initiatives for employees. <clears throat> the measure that she's going to use here, and again, this is her goal, is to complete and implement improvements to training. So I think uh, sh this is actually what she was doing on her job. They were really wanting to beef up their training and also get more involved in having um, e-learning modules for their um, employees. And so she has down here for her target to complete by October 31, 2013. Now I realize this only covers the first three parts of the balanced scorecard. These are really the critical parts. If you get these fir first three parts down, the rest, the other four, will should come fairly easily. So I haven't taken the time to put that up here, but I just wanted to show you that the measure here, again, is to complete and implement improvements, not a, not a financial measure like we'd ordinarily think of, and then she's got a target date to have those completed by. Um, some other things to notice, because I have included the in all seven parts in your handout, is that she comes back in the end and links it back to her strategy. Another thing that you'll notice if you look at her project is that she has two measures in learning growth. Now for the purposes of this project, you only I'm only requiring you to have one measure. But she did something that I frequently have noticed students do and that is she grouped a whole bunch she grouped really two different things together that needed to be separated. Because one of the training initiatives that she was going want, needed to improve was for the orientation process for new employees. And the other one um, that her department was tasked with improving were those veteran employees, people that already worked there. So the training initiatives were different from those two groups. And so I had her to break that out. But one thing you'll notice is if you look at her two different ones, her objective measure and targets are a little bit different. And she does have a different target date for each one of those um, trainings. Is that her logic of the underlying measure and the source of the information and frequency and the relationship to the strategic goals or objectives is identical. And that's okay, you know, because it's a very similar thing. Um, training is uh, very much linked to um, some of the strategic objectives of the hospital. With that, I'll go on to the next. Uh, 
her next um, perspective, which was her financial perspective. Okay, her financial perspective objective was to reduce training costs by developing e-learning courses. Now, what you'll notice from this is um, Jane is really in a cost center, so she's not doing anything to bring revenues into the company, but your financial measure needs to, um, to be somewhere in either in dollars and cents or in um, or a percentage. We're going to do something by a percentage. So if you don't want to mention dollars, just say we're going to grow or we're going to reduce costs by a certain percentage. So she has down here for her measure that she's going to reduce, wants to reduce the average cost of training per employee. Notice here that the measure is not specific. It's, it's pretty general because we don't know what, what, uh, what the goal is going to be. The target is going to show you the goal. The target says that we're, she's going to decrease the average cost of training per employee by 40%. Now that sounds really um, Uh, it sounds really aggressive, doesn't it? 40%. Huh? I mean, how is she going to do that by 40%? Why is she putting such a goal out there? But I think they were spending a lot of money on sending people away for trainings, and they were planning on this training that she was in the process of developing um, on the computer to be saving them a lot of money in their budget. Also, notice how this is very much linked to her first objective which is actually the learning and growth to write these new, um, to, to develop the training. So these are very much linked together and that's something that we learn as we study the balance scorecard is how a lot of these objectives can be closely linked. This just puts the financial um, perspective to it. Also notice that she has not just said we're going to reduce training costs because anybody can want to reduce costs, but she's telling me how she did it. She's developing, uh, going to be developing e-learning courses. Going on to the next uh, perspective, <clears throat> she has her internal business process <clears throat> as improving the framework of data collection of learning needs by creating an interface that captures the key indicators between training and competency. Um, and this is something that they were actually going to do. They're trying to make this link between training and competency. So she realized that um, the data that they needed to collect and how they needed to improve this would fall under the internal business process. Um, and they were doing uh, a learning needs assessment. And so they're going, she was going to look at the aggregate data from that. And the target was to achieve a composite rating uh, indicating a plus one, which is a perfectly perfect positive correlation from the results. Now this sounds very statistical to me, but this is exactly what she was doing at work uh, and what she was tasked with doing and she knew exactly what she was talking about. So I don't have to understand every piece and every part of your job and the project to see that this is definitely an internal business process and she's come up with a very specific target that she's measuring. And going on down to her last one, the customer perspective. Again, these are her internal customers. So she wants to find out if these quality of the new training tools that she's developing are meeting their needs. So her measure here were, um, the, are going to be the results of the training satisfaction surveys. And her initial target with this, again, it's very specific. Um, she wants to receive a rating, a rating score of at least 4.3 out of 5 on the survey. Now, it could be if they continue to poll these people in training, maybe the next year they want these numbers to go up. But right now, they're developing this new training, and so um, I think they set 4.3 out of 5 as what they thought was a reasonable goal. So I've gone over the four perspectives um, of the student's project. You will find many more details if you download um, this piece of uh, her project online. It is not the full complete project, but it is her uh, complete scorecard and the mission and strategy of the organization. That is the piece that goes before that. And I'll be talking more about the, all the pieces and parts of the scorecard uh, you'll read about in your project, and I'll be talking about some of them in um, some more of these clips. So stay tuned for the next one.